Vic, you can see behind us these utility trucks. Crews are working to remove a tree that has fallen in the middle of Frederick Road. And what we've seen tonight are these large old trees that have fallen in the middle of streets. And unfortunately, in at least one case, a tree fell into someone's home. Temperatures in the upper 80s and high humidity helped fuel some strong, severe storms that moved through parts of the state. And this was a very odd storm because it came in so hard and heavy. Lisa Thompson lives in the Dunlogan neighborhood in Ellicott City and says the creek by her house, Plum Spring Creek, never fails to flood during heavy storms. The trees and everything were just basically bending down. You felt like you were Dorothy in the middle of the Wizard of Oz. The same was true here along Riverside Circle at this creek, which leads into the Patuxent River. The homeowner telling WJZ he was concerned about how quickly the water was rising. It came up faster than it did during the Hurricane Agnes, which was huge. The heavy rain led to flash flood warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings were issued for the area but have since been canceled. Horizontal rain blowing through the neighborhood, sustained for about 15 minutes so it didn't let up at all. That sustained wind toppled trees like this one in the middle of Frederick Road. It's almost like a maze to get through just to get through the entire neighborhood. Here's another tree down on McAlpine and down the street. The family who lives in this home says they moved in about a month ago and are now talking to insurance adjusters about how they're going to rebuild. Lisa Thompson says she decided to vacate her home for fear of either flooding or a tree toppling through her house. As beautiful as the neighborhood is, it gets a little scary when you have this kind of a storm. Currently, more than 2,100 BGE customers are still without power tonight, the majority of whom live here in Howard County. The good news, Vic, though, is that we've seen several BGE trucks and also private companies like this one out here working to clear away debris and also restore the power. We're live tonight in Ellicott City. I'm Rachel Menatoff for WJZ. Rachel, thank you very much. Let's go now to meteorologist Chelsea Ingram tracking live Doppler radar and the potential for more storms tomorrow. Chelsea. Hi there, Vic. Hello, everyone. So I kind of want to show you to start how the afternoon evolved. We had these storms really rolling in and really getting that extra energy after about four o'clock this afternoon. They eventually strengthened, made their way into places like Howard County, Ellicott City, and then also into Baltimore, Carroll County. And then eventually when we lost that daytime heating, things started to quiet down. We lost the thunder, we lost the lightning, and now where we stand right now, well, it's a lot quieter, especially when we're checking out radar. So certainly a quieter evening setting up compared to what we dealt with earlier today. As far as precipitation totals, though, some areas picked up nearly three inches of rain in and around Columbia, just north of Reisterstown, and even toward northeast Maryland, that's in Cecil County. So we had some significant rainfall with these storms, and we do have yet another severe threat as we head into Tuesday. The Storm Prediction Center has placed much of our area, including Central Maryland, under the marginal risk for severe weather. So that means we could see some severe storms as we head into tomorrow afternoon and evening. Coming up in the full forecast, I'll track it so you know everything you need to know as we head into tomorrow afternoon and evening. That is straight ahead.